Welcome to the Corporate Trailblazers podcast, episode 34. Hi, everybody. This is kind of a special and shortish episode because I am on right now to tell you that I am currently at this point, at this moment in time, this minute, feeling depressed. Let me pause real quick here and say this episode is not medical advice. I do not have a degree in anything medical. I do not have any certifications on anything medical and I'm not qualified to give you medical advice. This entire episode is about what I do and how I feel when I am depressed. I hope it helps someone out there, but this is not qualified for medical advice. When in doubt, consult your doctor. Okay, let's keep going. And the reason I wanted to come and talk about it while I'm going through it is because number one, I wanted you to recognize the signs. Number two, I want you to know that while you're on your path to success, whatever success means to you, it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy all the time. And what ends up happening is that we confuse these feelings of depression or anything else that is going on with our mental health. We confuse them with uh, failure with feeling like we're not good enough and that's what drives us to quit and I don't want you to quit so for me it was very important and I feel like I have a responsibility to show you that you will make it despite all of these feelings that you're having that these are just par for the course that these are things that are going to happen and it won't happen to everybody. You might be listening to this and and felt, you know, I've never been depressed in my life. That's okay. That is all right. This is probably not the episode for you. This episode is for you if you have felt depression in the past, if you have a paralyzing fear of failure, a fear of success, feeling like once you get there, what is going to happen with your life. So I wanted to tell you what these symptoms are. All right. And so that you can start to recognize them as they come, because I want you to expect them. And once you see them to spring into action. So I actually put together a list of eight, nine things that I am doing right now to help me deal with the funk and to try to get out of it, because it's not something that I can just snap my fingers and make go away. But it's something that I know that when it's happening, there are things that I can do to help my state and get me back to what they call high vibe, right? To get back to my normal self and to get back to producing for you guys. So I'm going to tell you what this feels like a little bit. And you're going to hear my pages turning here because I wrote out this entire episode before I sat down to speak it, which is not normal for me. <laughs> I usually just write down a few bullet points and it's going to go off. But um, this was important. And, and because of my current state, I can't really rely on thinking on my feet. I could just come on and just be really sad and tell you about all the things that are making me upset. And that's not going to help anyone. So I am here to help. So I sat down and I wrote down what are the things that I thought would be helpful. So many people, by the way, would tell me to not do this. Many people will tell you, make sure that you've worked through your feelings and then talk to your audience or train them or teach them how to get over it after you have gotten over it or after you've learned something from it. For me, it was really, really important to tell you as this is happening because it's the best way that I can describe it is if I'm feeling it at the moment and still make it helpful for you guys. So number one, yes, I'm aware that I'm doing something that everybody tells me not to do. But I really think that it's important that you're not going to feel up and and like they say, lollipops and rainbows and unicorns every day. So here are some signs. Um, and something that I posted on social media is when when life hands you lemons, sell them online. So it's basically what I'm doing. Life handed me a lemon, which is sometimes I feel depressed. So I'm going to go out there and talk to you guys about it and make it something productive, right? Turn it into something you guys can use. So this is how it feels. First of all, on a physical, from a physical level, it feels like I have a tightness in my chest. Like I went out on a trip and I am nervous that I may have left the oven on at my house. It's that, that feeling of uneasiness. I also feel like sleepy. I feel like I just want to curl up and go to sleep. But at night, I don't want to go to bed because I don't want tomorrow to come. And it could be because 
I don't know how I'm gonna handle tomorrow. It could be because I'm feeling overwhelmed, but mostly I'm just not feeling like being myself again tomorrow. So the longer I stay awake, the longer I can push off tomorrow coming. So that's a big sign that I've noticed in myself is not wanting to go to bed at night. You seem to rest on your crutches, right? Non-productive crutches. And this could be watching movies that you've seen a million times over and over again, or TV shows that you've seen a million times. For me, this time around was binging on Friends season one. Don't get me started on the later seasons, but the first seasons were pretty good. So I've been binging on Friends, which is the most unproductive thing I could do with my time. Some people will indulge in a lot of food. Me, myself, I... You know, I see a sweet, something sweet, and I just put it in my mouth. People resort to drinking or smoking, or in my case, it was video games. I rediscovered a video game I used to play in my childhood when I was uh, in Chile visiting my sister, and I came home and I find myself playing that video game as an excuse to not go to bed. So in that video game, by the way, Civilization 2, it's a great game. Don't try it. It's addictive. <laughs> um, you feel sad, defeated. And suddenly, your dreams don't feel so realistic anymore. Every other day, I know that I'm working towards something that is going to get me to fulfill my dreams. But right now, in this state, I'm thinking maybe maybe they're not realistic. Maybe I'm just kidding myself. And I just keep thinking back of that movie, Requiem for a Dream, if you've ever seen it. There's this lady who, um, she wins a spot to attend there's this older lady who wins a spot to be on a TV show, uh, on like a game show. So she becomes obsessed with fixing herself so that she can be perfect for that day. And because she ends up hype up on drugs, she ends up losing her grasp on reality. She never actually makes it to the show. Sorry for the spoiler, but she never actually makes it to the game show. And that's how it's starting to feel for me when I'm in this state. I feel like I'm that lady who's trying to be perfect, trying to make it to the success point, but she will never make it because she's sabotaging herself now. That's how it feels. I don't think it's real. I think it's a matter of my state, but these, these are the feelings that are going through right now. Also, you know how to get out of this state. I know that if I just got up and jumped up and down and changed my physiology, right? Like just started jumping up and down, changed my language, started to talk about positive things or things in a positive light, started changing how I think about things, right? Instead of saying I'm depressed, saying I, I can overcome this. Changing all of that will change my state, but I don't want to. I want to stay sad and miserable because for some reason I am waiting for the moment when somebody's going to come through the door, put their hand on my shoulder and tell me that my misery is understandable, that they know what I'm going through and that it's okay to feel this way and that it is, it's all, that it all makes sense, that this is not just a senseless cry for help that yes, Ina, you should feel this way and this is why and I understand you. So it's almost like I want to stay in this state until somebody can tell me that. So even though I know there are things that I could do to get out of it, I don't want to. I also notice that I become extremely irritable very quickly. So many little things make me very frustrated and annoyed. So you may find yourself throwing things because they're out of your way. So overreacting to little things that may be annoying. Like you stumble upon a stool that is in the wrong place and you just push it out of the way or kick it out of the way. Little things like that. Also because you're aware of this irritability and you know that you don't want your loved ones to be affected by it, you exercise an inhuman ability to not yell or lash out at your kids, at your spouse, or you may not have that kind of restraint and you end up lashing out. You end up becoming very irritable. You end up yelling for no reason. You end up picking fights, screaming at each other. That can happen too. You come home and you don't take your jacket off because it's just too much work. You feel sleepy and you want to indulge in all those vices that I told you. We also linger in bed. When we wake up in the morning, we're not ready to tackle the day. We just want to stay in bed for as long as possible. And we think people are judging us all the time. People hate us. 
they are always thinking that we're doing something wrong. You know, it could be your spouse, your siblings, your parents, your in-laws. They all hate us and they are all constantly judging us. And again, to remind you, these are feelings that you have in the moment. These don't really reflect reality. It's just how it feels. It's just how your brain is interpreting all these signals and feeding them into your brain to give you more reasons to stay in this state. They don't have to be true. So this state can last a couple of days, a week, a month, but we all know that it's temporary. We don't feel this way all the time. So it's one of those things that I know that I'm not going to quit working on what I'm working on or make drastic decisions while I am in this state because I know that it is temporary. It's not going to last. So I wanted to jump in and tell you a few things that I'm doing right now to deal with this in a productive way and to try to get out of it. So I wrote down nine things and there is one bonus thing that I'm actively not doing because I don't feel like it because I am in this state. But I'm going to give it to you anyway just in case it's a good one for you. So it's technically 10 pieces of advice, one of which I'm not following for myself. So advice number one. I've been listening to people who inspire me. So there is, there are people out there who motivate me, right? And motivation is different from inspiration. Motivation is something that helps you spring into action. So listening to a lot of Amy Porterfield or Badass Business Babes, I hear a lot of strategy in those messages. And I don't feel like implementing strategies right now. So I'm going to listen to people that are going to help me feel better. So Amber Lillestrom, she's one that is, she's one of my favorites, favorites, and she has a podcast, um, the Amber Lillestrom show. And she has something called Focus Friday, which basically she's, she lives in New Hampshire and she takes a walk down the road and she takes her microphone with her and then she talks to you about something. So I've been listening to her uh, to get her in my head, to get me inspired more not motivated, but inspired. Because right now in my state, I don't feel like being motivated, but I do feel like I need some thoughts in my head that are positive. So what is it for you? What do you like to do? Um, There's another podcast that I would highly recommend is Faith Mariah's podcast is the Radical Transformation Project. And she is all about mental health. So it every single episode, it's gold for getting you in a better state of mind. But think about the things that work for you normally. What makes you feel better? Number two is I have a therapist appointment. Now, I need you to understand. First of all, therapy is not for everybody. I'm not saying go see a therapist. I'm saying I want you to identify those things that help you stay in a good state, right? Not get you out of it once you're, you know, in a funk. But what are the things that help you basically do some maintenance in your car, right? Um, What are your internal maintenance requirements? I know that for me is to go to therapy every two weeks, to be in a space where I can talk about things that I can't talk to anybody about, things that I need to say out loud that I can't say to anyone. That is a really important state for me. That is a really important place for me. So because I was out on a trip, I actually haven't seen my therapist in a month and that may have affected my mood. That definitely made me drop into a low because I did not keep up with my maintenance regimen. Does that make sense? So what helps you? Is it to go out for walks? Is it to exercise? Is it to eat well? Is it to always meditate every morning? Is it to have a morning routine? Whatever it is, make that a non-negotiable. These are things that you need to function, so stay on top of them. Number three, is I keep my meetings. I try to have as normal a day as possible because I've, I've said this in previous podcast episodes that your body and your mind are more like a video game than anything. Your mind looks at your physical posture, looks at your physical actions, and then determines what mood you must be in. So it's like you're watching yourself in a video game. If you are watching yourself be happy and jump around and smiling, then your mind switches to be to saying, oh, she must be happy. She must be in a good mood. And it helps you with it rather than the other way around, rather than your mind being happy and then your body following suit. It's really more like your body 
first. So if I try to keep my meetings, if I try to keep my day as normal as possible, then there's a better chance that my mind will think, well, everything is normal then. Everything is fine. And that's a little trick that I use throughout the day. Just act normal, smile, do everything you would normally do, and then your mind will catch on that everything is okay. As for number four, I watch my food and I avoid sweets. This is different for everybody. So I'm just going to tell you for me, I know that if I eat well and I exercise, I can keep my depression at bay single-handedly. Like that's the only thing I need to do to keep my depression at bay. But most of the times I don't. Most of the times I do other things that keep it at bay, such as going to therapy, you know, those things. Um, But when I'm in a funk, I know that now is more important than ever to watch what I eat. So to that end, I decided to purchase pre-cut fruit. (laughs) And I say that because when I buy fruit, it just takes me so long to get it out of the fridge and to cut it up. And to, it's just way too much work. But when I buy it pre-cut, then it makes it a lot easier for me. And I'm not trying to just avoid work. I'm saying that when you are in this state, you have to make things as easy for you as possible. And if that means spending the $5 for something that would normally cost 25 cents if you bought it in bulk, then just do it. Because your mindset, your mindfulness, your state your happiness is much more important than those five dollars that you spent so every morning i have been having fruit that is already pre-cut i don't have to work for it and i can actually put some healthy things in my body so do whatever works for you in terms of food in terms of exercise Uh, if you know that helps you just make yourself do it is one of those maintenance things about your car again you are your car give yourself the maintenance you need as for number five i accept my schedule for the day Uh, and that's exactly how i wrote it down because when you feel in this mood you may be tempted to just cancel every meeting and say i'm not in the mood i am not going to give it my all so i might as well not even try and the opposite is true going back to number three of going about my day as normal as possible keep your meetings Look at your schedule and accept it. So number three was about keeping your meetings, keeping everything the same. Number five is about acceptance. It's about looking at your calendar, looking at every meeting and start to visualize those meetings and say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I need this. I'm not going to cancel any of this. I am just going to go through with it. So accept the meetings you have for the day, the things you have to do, so you can prime your brain and be ready for those tasks. And now we're over halfway done with our list. So number six is stay away from vices. So if it means that you don't have the TV on, you don't have your computer on, you stay away from your phone, you don't drink, you don't smoke, whatever it is that comes to your mind stay away from it if that means just sitting alone in a room all quiet allow yourself those five minutes of reflection of just being right avoid devices if you tend to overdo your food intake stay away from it or snack on healthy things go back to that pre-cut fruit to get some some of that out of the fridge eat a banana so if food is your problem replace it with little things that you can eat that are healthy for you like vegetables and hummus who doesn't like like hummus i love hummus so i bought myself some hummus some cucumbers and that's what i dip in cucumbers and hummus oh my god best thing in the world so stay away from the vices i'm staying away from that (laughs) devil computer game because i know it's going to suck me right back in and i don't need to shut off my mind i just need to reroute my thoughts so stay away from those Number seven is informed your loved one. Don't pretend that your feelings are not there. Don't try to hide it. They can probably tell that you're in a funk anyway, but their first reaction is probably not going to be of understanding and compassion. It's probably going to be of annoyance. Why isn't she helping me with this? Why didn't she take care of the laundry? Why didn't she pick up the kids? Why didn't she do this? Why didn't she do that? So what you want to do is inform them. Tell them, hey, honey, I am going through a little bit of a depression. I feel this way and this way, and I need your help to get out of this as fast as possible. If you can help me with A, B, and C, 
that would be great. If you could just listen to me for a little bit, that would be great. That's what I did last night with my husband. He uh, came up, told me that he was going to bed, and I told him, do you have two minutes for your wife who needs you? <laughs> and those are the exact words that I used. And he sat down and he listened to me. Now, he doesn't understand everything that I do all the time, especially with my work, but he listens. And he let me just say some things um, that... I normally would just keep to myself because I don't feel like I want to bother anybody. So that was super helpful to me because he told me straight out, you have a family who loves you. I love you. Your kids love you. It's going to be okay. And that's really what I wanted to hear, what I needed to hear from him at that point. So don't ignore this. Go and tell your loved ones that you're going through this and let them help you. It's so important that you don't go through this alone. Number eight I give myself a break. <laughs> I have had to let something slide. I really wanted to do something on a certain date and I decided I'm just going to push that date. So whatever that means to you, to not feel guilty about the things that are not getting done while you're trying to get out of your funk. Because what ends up happening is we end up pushing ourselves anyway and that doesn't help us get out of the funk any faster. It, it, it carves us into a deeper, deeper hole. And what I want for you is to understand that this is going to happen. You are going to have days where you're not going to be your most productive. And I want you to tell yourself, you know what? This is okay because in the long run, I am more likely to succeed if I take care of myself than if I burn out and decide to completely quit. Remember, the name of the game is not quitting. So that's what I want you to think about. All right. In order to not quit, you need to stop and have a mental health moment. Okay, so give that to yourself and give yourself a break when things slide. Number nine, we're almost done with our list, is don't make any big decisions, especially about work, especially about your relationships. When you're in this funk, I already told you way in the beginning of this episode, all the things that you're feeling, none of those things are based in reality. All of those things are based on how you feel right now. So if there's one thing that you must make sure that you don't do when you're in this state is to make decisions about your relationship, about your work, about the course of your life. I beg you to wait until you're feeling of, of a more sound mind to make any changes. Now it is possible that you're feeling sad because things are not working out and that is okay. But I want you to first take care of yourself, get out of this funk, and then take a look at your life objectively. Take a look at the things that you love to do. Take a look at your passions. Take a look at why you may have been feeling sad, and then take action on those. But do not take action while you are feeling this way. That's the recipe for disaster. When you make decisions that are not based on reality, that are only based on how you feel. So get out of this funk first. You know that it's temporary. You know that it's not going to last. All right. So get out of it. Write yourself a note if you want. This is actually, I make a confession right now. This is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm writing a note to self from this state. And I'm saying, hey, Ina, next time that you're in this state, I want you to remember to do these things. I'm doing this for me and I'm really hoping that it helps somebody out there. That if you're feeling this way right now, try a few of these things. I know that you don't feel like doing much at all right now, but I want you to know that I'm there. I am with you. And this is what has, I mean, I'm not telling you that these things have managed to keep me out of it or that get me out of it because I'm still in this state. These are the things that I'm doing to speed up that recovery, to speed up my getting out of this hole, right? And I know because I'm an intelligent person and as are you, that there are things that you can do to get yourself out of the state sooner. So do those things. Mechanically, um, just do them. And the last thing is the bonus thing that I told you that I'm not doing, which is working out. I should be working out. I should put some shoes on right now, go out my door in 30 degree weather, and I should take a walk around the block. But I'm not going to because I don't feel like it. I am hungry. 
I'm going to have lunch right now. And after that, I'm probably going to go pick up my kids. I might look at some of the things that I went through in the meetings that I had today and figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. That's what I'm feeling called to do. But in the meantime, I'm going to focus on these 10 things. Technically nine. Number one, continue to listen to people who inspire me. Number two, go see my therapist on Thursday. I can't wait. Number three, keep my meetings and go about my day normally. Number four, watch my food, avoid sweets, keep buying that pre-cut fruit because it helps me eat healthy. Five, accept my schedule for the day. Number six, stay away from vices. Do not open civilization too. Seven, inform your loved ones. I told my husband last night, I want you to go out and tell somebody how you feel. Number eight, give myself a break. When things slide, things slide. Number nine, don't make any big decisions about my relationships or about my work while I'm in the state. And number 10, which I'm not doing, but you should totally do, do as I say, not as I do, is working out. That really helps. But I'm not going to because I don't feel like it. So I really hope that was helpful. This is kind of a note to self from the, from the depths <laughs> of how I feel right now. And I want you to know that I know that this is temporary. I know this is not going to last. I know there are things that I'm doing that are smart things to do to get out of this funk. And by next week, I'm going to be up and about and I'm going to be smiling and happy and I'm going to be out on my social media posts and I'm going to be out creating awesome, awesome content for everybody who listens. And I'm going to keep showing you how to get out of your funk and I'm going to keep showing you how to start businesses because you know that you're not happy at your current job and that is not the only option you have. You have a million choices and one of them is to start something on the side and validate your idea so that you can have something that is your something that you can use your creative juices for and you can live a life without regret so without further ado i'm gonna go and have some lunch i hope you decide to get up and do something else whether it's number 10 working out or number seven go and tell your loved one go and do something but remember we are all here for you Come and join us in the Facebook group. It's Corporate Trailblazers Unite. And you can go to inacoveni.com slash Facebook to join it now. And you can tell us how you feel because we can help you get out of it with action, with creativity, and get you set up for that new life that you know is in your future. You just need a little bit of help with it. I will see you in the group. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope this was helpful and have a great day. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Corporate Trailblazers podcast with Ina Coveney. And this is a part where I ask you to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and to go to iTunes and leave me a review and a star rating. It really does help people find the show when you do that and I would really appreciate it. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Ina Coveney and on Facebook at facebook.com slash female trailblazer. All right, guys, I hope to see you there. Bye.